Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, welcome to Victoria 3, a brand new Paradox Grand Strategy game, and that means one very specific thing. Despite the fact that I have read the dev diaries, watched the video tutorials, and played this already for about, say, 10 hours or so, given to get my hands on it just a little bit early, in Paradox World, that is nothing. Alright, basically, you're here today to watch me crash and burn horribly. It's gonna be great. I will say, my recent experiment with Victoria 2 has at least given me a grounding. This is the Paradox game all about the economy. Specifically, markets full of dynamically priced goods. Everything, ultimately, is all about that. In many ways, it's the geekiest, nerdiest of all Paradox games. It's basically a giant spreadsheet, which does make me think. If I just spent a bit of time in this, I suspect this could become my favourite Paradox game of all. So, okay, let's dive in, because I did notice something rather interesting. So sure, we could play as a great power in Europe, we got ourselves Prussia, we got ourselves France, we got ourselves... Bloody hell, Paradox. Okay, at some point you might want to take another stab at how the engine renders children, because that is truly terrifying. So how about instead we flee as far as we possibly can from the terrifying haunted doll that is currently ruling Spain, and head down over here to South America, because I think I found a really interesting country to learn the game with. Say hello to New Granada, a very young nation at the time of this game, but one that's got a lot of potential. Plentiful natural resources, the beginnings of industrialization, meaning this country could go far. Which makes it a real shame that I'm the one that's going to be running the place, because, as I say, I'm still learning the game. I'm probably about to trash this country. And there she is, New Granada. Of course, uh, yes, Colombia, as she would be today, more or less, and... Uh, Bloody hell, this game is beautiful. It's like a really colourful train set. I adore it. So, as you might expect for a Paradox game, my country is made up of distinct provinces. I believe in this game, they're referred to as states. And one of this nation's strengths is each of them brings something different to the table. So down the south of the country, for example, we're touching on the Amazon rainforest, meaning we could get ourselves a big old pile of hardwood, nice and easy. Meanwhile, if we go to the other side of the nation, over here in Panama, things might not immediately look quite so exciting. There's no modifier here, not every territory gets one. But what Panama does have is flexibility. You see, unlike in Victoria 2, where each territory had one and only one thing that was the core thing around which the entire territory's production was based, in Victoria 3, you've got a lot more choices. So Panama, of course, is right by the sea. If I want to build fishing wharves, I can do that, producing food that I can use to feed to my people or sell into the market. If I want to build logging camps, I could do that here. But those might be better placed next to the rainforests. Alternatively, I could dig up coal, and of course, this being a lovely, lovely climate where we can grow all sorts of sexy things, I can set up banana plantations, coffee plantations, livestock, maize, tobacco, all the rest of it. Territories are a lot more flexible than they used to be. Which brings us down south, where yes, the resources aren't that spectacular, but the climate means that we could grow all sorts of very valuable cash crops. And then in the middle of the nation, we've got the beginnings of an urban centre. Our first tiny workshops. Factories might be overselling it a bit. So that wood, what do we do with it? We ship it here, it gets turned into furniture. So alright, harvest raw resources, turn them into bigger resources. That's the how, but the missing piece is the why. What's this game ultimately all about? Like I was saying before, it's all about growing the economy. Unfortunately, that's... um. A little bit more complicated than it sounds. Like, you know, you might be used to video games where if you want to make more money, then you spend a bit of money up front on something like, say, a market. Then over time, the market just gives you money. Then after five years, you've made your money back, you're making a profit. Hooray, free money. It's, um, yes, a lot more complex than that. It's more about slowly and healthily growing and supporting your economy, and specifically, the people inside it. 
yeah, this lot over here. Because buildings that are doing okay aren't paying out money to me, they're paying out money in wages to these individuals. The lower and middle strata, who are doing a job that pay various wages in the building, and if the building's doing pretty darn well, it'll start paying out dividends to the upper strata, the snooty 1% bastards who own the place. And those people are gonna take that money and try and use it to buy the things they need as part of their day-to-day -day lives. Some food, some new clothes, some booze to distract themselves from the fact that they live in a country run by me. And on top of that, a little bit of it is going to flow upwards. The wealthier people are, the more tax I can get out of them. So as nice as it would be to dream of immediately tossing up a giant factory that produces luxury chairs and automobiles, we've got, uh, yes, certain more core problems to deal with first. If we were to look at, say, our population, the majority of my nation, just over 50%, is a peasant. And peasants, um, that's, uh, that's bad. That means people who are engaged in subsistence farming. Alright, they spend their days desperately struggling to not die. Functionally, these people are barely contributing in the economy at all. They're not making enough money that I can get any significant tax out of them. And on top of that, they're not really producing any goods that are circulating in the economy either. However, if I could get them a job as, say, a labourer or a farmer, they can afford to buy a few more bits and pieces, their lives are better, and because they're working on a bigger, more efficient farm, they're producing goods. So... Okay, step one is probably create jobs so the peasants can become farmers and laborers. That is an excellent first step. And in terms of figuring out what we ought to prioritize, okay, over to our internal market of staple goods. Let's just focus on what people need to live. Stuff there's not enough of floating around is going to get more expensive. Simple rules of supply and demand. So wood right now is ludicrously too expensive. So it sure is lucky we've got ourselves a rainforest right bloody next door. So yes, we can start a new logging camp immediately. The problem we've got, however, is yes, it's going to take a long time to build this here logging camp. Why? Because we don't have much in the way of building infrastructure for the time being. So okay, let's not worry about building that for now. Instead, probably the best thing we could do would be go down to a development and... Yes, invest in the construction center. That's going to mean buildings get built faster, and on top of that, it's going to generate some decently paying jobs by itself. Though, yeah, it's only a weird thing in this game. Um, every builder in existence appears to be a government employee, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense. But, okay, let's just overlook that. This game in general is slightly vague on the topic of who you're playing as. Like the official explanation given in the dev diary for what you're doing is you represent the spirit of the nation. You're inspiring people to make choices. But it is a bit more hands-on than it felt in Victoria 2 say. You definitely intervene in the market and control what's being built and not built a lot more. So just swap this round because uh, yes right now that logging camp is like a year away from being done. Construction center, that's going to be put together way, way faster. And as soon as that gets up to speed, logging camps are going to come in nice and fast too. Be beautiful. Right, while that's ticking along, just a quick introduction to, yes, the basic and most important stats in the game up at the top here. So naturally, money. Right now we are running a surplus, which is lovely, together with a gold reserve. Don't worry if that hits zero. In this game, you could go into the red as well. In fact, you kind of expect to. Going into debt in order to fund further infrastructure, that's perfectly normal and to be expected. Influence is broadly your ability to engage in, yes, diplomacy around the world. That's your I'm speaking to other people funds. So speaking of which, diplomatic lens, show me my neighbours and okay. They're all pretty chill. Right now, we're just South American nations hanging out together, being best friends. The only problem is, okay. Potentially, yes, Great Britain and the Netherlands are not super keen on me right now. So let's see if we can make Venezuela become my new best super friends. Britain, that's more expensive because, yes, they're bigger and further away. But let's just keep them on side and we can just about afford to, uh, yes, get the Netherlands to be super chill as well. Next along, authority. Basically, your ability to do extra stuff 
inside your empire. Kind of imagine it like the Edicts Fund in Stellaris. So over in politics, here we go, decrees. So a big one is going to be road maintenance, state construction efficiency, build things faster. That there seems like an excellent thing to have on right now, given we are literally about to be building here and then here. In addition, our manufacturing is, yeah, centered right here. So how about we say encourage a manufacturing industry, meaning all my service industry and manufacturing gets 20% better. Brilliant. So we're spending a bit of authority just to encourage that to do its own business. We can also encourage agriculture or resource gathering. This is my bread basket for the time being. So okay, encourage agriculture right here if you'd be so kind. We've also got some good agriculture going on here. So that's absolutely A-OK -okay too. And as I've got some spare authority, this is going to be where we're getting the wood from. So as a result of that, resource industry, spectacular. So that is now committed. You can't bank that, by the way. I'm not like, you know, filling up a bar 30 a month. That's just the amount you've got to spend. And if you go under it, there are consequences. Speaking of going under in consequences, uh, bureaucracy. The bar you use to basically do uh, your day-to-day -day management of the empire. And right now, it's uh, overstretched leading to tax waste. And the cause of that is uh, trade routes. Okay, apparently this nation starts already trading. Trading uh, more than we can actually support. So, all right, let's have a dig into that quickly. Okay, I see what's going on. So, we're engaged in a lot of trade with America right now. Specifically, we're selling them coffee. And in return, we're importing clippers because, uh, okay, so we're producing cash crops, selling them to America, and importing in return military goods. Because uh, the military in recent years has got a bit advanced. Now we need uh, guns and artillery and ships, and we don't have the capacity to make them ourselves. Meaning we've got to import them from the nations that can. Okay, we're going to lose a bit of money here, but cancel some of the export routes. We simply can't bloody afford to maintain them. So we've lost a little bit of, yes, trading money there, but when the week ticks over, we should gain a bit more tax because now, yes, my bureaucrats have been freed up to focus on actually collecting, there we go, poll taxes and income taxes coming in, spectacular. And a couple more things, no active research, so okay, big old research tree, admittedly we are probably a bit behind technologically. And I tell you what, stick on production for the time being, intensive agriculture. All right, the way we're going to be making money, clearly we already are doing so, is farming. All right, we can sell good quality stuff to the stupid idiot nations who live in Europe and can't grow all the stuff we can grow. What a bunch of losers. And one more thing too, declared interest. I'm just powerful enough to, yes, basically say, hey, I would like to declare I'm interested in an area around the world. Broadly, this is the first step towards thinking about colonization and, uh, oh, here we go. South America. That's where we want to be. Nice and nearby, but plenty of interesting land we might want to take. Because as lovely as my territory is, the stuff I simply don't have access to. So, for example, yes, that lovely fertilizer I was just talking about. If I want to make that, I need iron and specifically a big old pile of sulfur. Alright, importing all the fertilizer I need for my farms, a bad idea. We need to produce it right here. But I can't because I literally don't possess sulfur in this empire. Alright, it's not here. I've got one iron mine up north. Brilliant. Gonna be wanting to uh, work on that at some point. But yes, indeed, if we just... Uh, nip down over here and find ourselves uh, some uh, lovely decentralized nations. Oh yeah, decentralized power, decentralized power, decentralized power. That basically means that you can just very slowly push in and take a bit of their land uh, for yourself. But we're gonna feel really bad about it afterwards. And the reason we want to do this is that South America is swimming in sulfur. All right, that's the resource we want to get our hands on. Sulfur, sulfur, more bloody sulfur. Still, the problem we've got right now is, yes, our policy in government is we don't go and do that. So uh, 
luckily for me, there is some support locally to make this sort of thing happen. Colonial resettlement or colonial exploitation. Okay, that one sounds bad. Okay, we're not going to be doing that one. That one sounds uh, really, really nasty. This one is just about... Okay, colonies are established to provide land to settlers from my nation. That sounds less evil. So we're going to start moving a law change in the right direction. And apparently... Okay, the armed forces are super into this. Good, 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 good. Still, time is finally ticking along and yes indeed, that construction center is almost done. However, that doesn't just mean there are now magically builders. In this game, everything's got to come from somewhere and go to somewhere. So right now, it's not helping in the slightest because nobody works there. It's trying to find workers at the moment. Potentially, it might struggle to find some of the right workers in terms of, say, bureaucrats, just because there's not that many of them in the country. When we're building plenty of farms and whatnot, that's going to be nice and easy. But straight away, okay. We've run into another problem immediately, which is if I want to build anything, right now I need wood and I need fabric. Because yes, we're putting together basic wooden buildings. Don't even think about iron frame buildings just yet. That's, uh, that's more than we're capable of achieving. And I don't have enough wood. There is literally not enough wood in the nation to actually fulfill my desires for building. Which is going to slow everything down. So okay, step one, deal with huge resource shortfalls that exist in my nation. Now fortunately, I could if I wanted to fix this. Alright, because as I say, you're a bit more hands-on than you might be expecting in this game. So I possess, as the mysterious spirit of the nation, a giant pile of convoys that I can just send around the world. Alright, right now I've got about, yeah, 120 of them free. I can just send them to any market of my choosing and buy at the local price and bring it back to my nation. So here we go. The Danish market is apparently just swimming in dumb amounts of wood. So pick it up and bring it back here. That is going to cause the local wood in my market to go down from £35 to a much more reasonable 20 And on top of that, I'm actually going to make a profit out of it because... Yeah, I'm buying the wood at £15 from Denmark and then I'm selling it at the current price in New Granada. The price is going to drop, but there's still more demand for it here than I can supply from Denmark. So I'm going to make a profit out of this. So, okay, you know what? Let's get that going on. And now as time just ticks along in just a moment as the ships start arriving with the first wood shipment, probably next week or thereabouts. Yes, as more and more wood arrives, the price of wood should start going down. Once we're producing our own wood and the price starts dropping, we should probably cancel that import route because we're going to start making a loss on it once the price differential between our market and the Danish market starts going down and there we go. Look at that right there. I have just intervened in the market to fix a temporary supply problem. And not only that, but I've solved a problem that was occurring with, yes, the construction. Because the people who were trying to build this logging yard, they need wood and fabric to build that. We were out of it, leading to the cost of construction to go through the roof. Now I've provided wood into the market, they can buy it at a more reasonable price, meaning, yes, the cost of construction has gone down. Construction can get dumb expensive if you don't have the resources to actually do the construction. That's something to keep an eye on. And I think with that, you might be starting to, uh, yes, get to grips with uh, what this game's like. You pull one lever, and all of a sudden, 17 things you weren't expecting start exploding. Hilarious thing to keep an eye on, by the way, which is, uh, as soon as I'm actually done with this current construction job, uh, there's a very real possibility that the price of wood is going to crash. For the simple reason that, one, I'm no longer using the wood to build the logging camp, Two, the logging camp is going to start producing wood. However, cheap wood has its advantages too. Right now, my furniture manufacture place needs wood and fabric to make chairs. And it's kind of struggling to make a profit apparently. So as a result of that, if wood got a bit cheaper, that would make it easier to produce chairs. Basically, I would be 
indirectly subsidising the furniture manufacture industry and uh, yeah basically this game's just an Excel spreadsheet but really pretty and I'm kind of in love with it. And here we go, log camp begins, but oh dear, you didn't think a logging camp was, you know, just a simple thing to produce wood, did you? Oh no, 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 it has got multiple different production methods. So uh, right now it's just a bunch of people with axes. I could change it over to sawmills. Now officially we'd apparently be making a profit anyway, but the price of tools is going to skyrocket because we don't produce enough of them inside our own empire. So we'd have to get them from somewhere else and that's going to be really expensive. So okay, don't worry about that for now. Meanwhile, right now we're just producing basic wood. However, hardwood, that's where we're going to get absolutely tons of hardwood because the Amazon and whatnot. Though hardwood for now, we don't need. That's more used for more advanced goods. So leave that for the time being. Right now, we're just working on fulfilling the basic needs of our people. And here we go. We are starting to recruit people into the logging camp. So cash reserves going down. Okay, by any chance, have I just crashed the, um, the wood market? Okay, wood is now, yes, the price of wood is starting to fall. So you've got to balance how much you want to support more advanced industries by making sure they've got access to cheap basic raw resources versus, hey, the raw resources producers, they've got to turn a profit too. Otherwise, yeah, the whole thing's going to bloody collapse. Well, my goodness, we've got colonial resettlement. Brilliant, though. Um, Okay, there has been some slight issues, such as, for example, some people who hate the idea of us being a colonial power are going to start being radicalized. So yes, these are my interest groups. Pops who are politically active, which is plenty of them, tend to skew towards one of these groups. So armed forces, for example, yes, they're really happy with this. They wanted me to get out there and set up some colonies. And because they were up for that, they are now loyal. Meaning I can now, yes, be much more powerful when it comes to fighting. They're willing to fight for me. And on top of that, military tech costs are down. However, um, some people less keen on what just happened. So the rural folk, they're not keen on this at all. So I have lost honest work. I would get 10% bonuses to my logging and agriculture if I was to cheer these guys up. Brilliant. And ultimately, yeah, bonus 10% to infrastructure. Important for keeping the nation running smoothly. But they're not quite annoyed enough yet to activate old ways. They're negative traits where if I really annoy them, technology spread's going to slow down. Okay, let's not worry about those guys for now. Let's worry about... Oh, blimey. We're in a race. Okay, so there is currently a bit of a scramble going on for territory down in South America. Chile naturally borders some of the decentralized nations. They are just going in and taking this land, eating it bit by bit. I mean, I do feel like, yes, potentially me and Chile just staying away from each other probably wouldn't hurt. Otherwise, we're going to end up with all sorts of horrible border gore. Actually, you know what? This territory is not bad. Not bad at all. There isn't the, uh, yes, mountainous downside to this. And uh, as far as I can see, hang about... Okay, Argentina is expanding down in this direction. I think we should go for Pantagonia. Just check out what else they've got going on before we make our final decision here. So, fishing, tiny bit of sulfur, bit of coal, livestock ranchers. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's not, it's not spectacular, but there is sulfur. So, we're just going to go in right here, working on that. Though, actually, there's nothing to stop me. Yeah, I can just do both or like all three in theory but as I understand it it uh yeah slows down as you do so right now that's 200 days if I go over to here that becomes 400 days so yeah don't actually do anything there just focus on eating as much of this territory as we can before Argentina arrives also I can't help but um notice that uh oh so Brazil just um just just ate someone. I swear there was there was a country here a uh, a second ago. Now there's not. Now there's just Brazil. And Brazil apparently doesn't actually. Okay, um, deploy diplomats. Okay, um, issue number two. Apparently Brazil have like a um legitimate historical claim on this tiny region 
at the Ejimaya Nation. Do they have that for like all of the... Okay, just this bit. Don't build anything here. Build everything here. If Brazil decide they really want this, just give it to them. We can't fight Brazil. Oh, and apparently we've got ourselves a colony. Okay, it's a bit... It's completely empty, to be honest. And right now it is not connected to the market at all. There is simply no way for it to engage with our market. So stuff that we're actually generating here, yeah, doesn't do anything. But that's that's fine, because we could if we wanted to. Oh, there's a sulfur mine. Beautiful. Okay, we can build a port. That way, it will actually be able to start engaging with the rest of us. Hang on, is it a port or is it a shipyard? Would that be good enough? Here we go. Any port. Any port would do. Okay, leave them alone for now. Just let them expand a little bit. And uh, when the time is right, that's going to be... Oh, yeah. The new Granadine Pantagonia. Magnificent. They'll just be getting with that by themselves. There's barely any of them. They'll be fine, I'm sure. Oh, and I think I found a way to make the rural folks calm down a bit. So, uh, right now, yes, our policy in terms of economic system is uh, interventionism. So... Uh, Anytime I want to, what I can do is, yeah, subsidize buildings. Basically, if they're making a loss, pay money to offset that loss. If I went over to agrarianism, I could only do that for, yes, basic buildings that are in the agricultural regions. But aristocrats are going to start contributing more to the investment pool, i.e. free building money that exists if you're not building something for a while. So... I see no reason not to go for this. It's a bit of an obscure one, but most people don't care. But the rural folks would love it. So uh, we're going to go over to an agrarian economy. All right, logging camp number two is now complete and is up to full employment. So we should have uh, plenty of bloody wood, finally. Right? Okay. Wood is holding at a pretty sensible price, meaning the industry in the center, that's going to start working. Yep, that's working just fine. They can buy wood, they can buy cloth, and as a result, they can produce loads of chairs. Life is good. Well, I tell you what, we're swimming in money. We could possibly start thinking about some more advanced bits and pieces here. And also, yes, as the economy is looking good, uh, step one, I'm going to invest in a little bit more in the way of, uh, yeah, construction. Let's get a few more builders uh, ready to go. So uh, future buildings are going to be more efficient. I tell you what, we could do with just some basic food. All right, food is still, in fact, everything's expensive right now. Basically, we just need to invest hugely in producing a giant pile of everything. If we just produce a giant pile of everything, prices are going to go down. There's going to be more money available for everybody. Let's flip and go. We're going to have loads more construction. Then we're going to go straight into maize. Maize is, if you'll pardon the pun, an amazing crop. It produces so much grain. Though factory, we're currently building entirely with, yes, wood and cloth. So, okay, order a play here. One, I want more builders. Two, I want more cotton plantations. So once we are swimming in giant piles of wood and cloth, then we can build other things more cheaply, more efficiently, and just constantly. It's going to be great. And here comes agrarianism. So, okay, um, the trade unions and the industrialists aren't thrilled, but for the time being, okay, are they feeling good enough to give me honest work? Not yet, damn it. Still, I'd say we're doing well. And with so many construction goods floating around, it's not costing me that much to get on with building, I think, and uh, Napoleonic Warfare. Okay, I didn't research that tech, just other techs are floating around, uh, and eventually when they become common enough, they just make their way to you, it's fine. Okay, cotton plantation is done, producing a big old pile of uh, fabric straight away. There just comes more technology that everyone else already discovered. Oh, that one's good, actually. So, uh, loan interest rates. If I go into debt, I'm going to go into debt at some point. Yes, all of a sudden, that becomes uh, much easier. In fact, you know what? We're almost maxed out in terms of uh, our gold reserves. I'm going to lower taxes. 
that's what I'm going to do. So as a result of that, there's going to be less radicalization. But more importantly, yeah, like normally in a video game, you want your tax rate to be as high as you can reasonably get away with. As long as people will tolerate it and not actively rise up and stab you, that's where you want your tax rate to be. But in this game, because money's supposed to be circulating, actually, there could be some really good long-term benefits to all my businesses uh, to just keep taxes uh, as low as they can be. Ooh, and apparently we've got ourselves a- uh, oh my. We just learned how to make clothes that have got a bit of colour to them. Okay, my textile mill. I can now change it over to a dye workshop, which will produce more clothes uh, faster apparently, because I'd be using machinery rather than just, like, hand-stitching them. However, the price of dye would explode, meaning, overall, it would be a bad decision. Or at least it would be if we could have produced our own dyes, which we can, and those dyes are going to be, oh my, well, life is good for me. And the cost of construction shouldn't even be that high. It should be manageable, right? Because, uh, yeah, I am just basically using wooden cloth to produce goods. And uh, we've got plenty of wooden cloth. Though, speaking of which, okay, at some point we should probably be thinking about, um, you know, buildings made out of iron or whatnot. So, okay, let's have a think about this. If I want this to happen, I need... Uh, Iron, and I need uh, tools. Okay, iron mines, uh, that's fine. Where do tools come from, precisely? From a tooling workshop that can produce... Oh, the tools can be made of wood. Okay, well, wood we can do. So, okay, next on the list is going to be a tool workshop. We can just make basic tools uh, out of wood uh, as a starting point. And then, uh, over time, we can slowly move them uh, to start producing metal tools. Presumably using the iron mines uh, we can build uh, after that point. Just, yeah, line all this up. Just start queuing everything together. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be spectacular. All right, this nation's starting to come together. Oh, and there she is. Intensive agriculture is done. So, okay... We're ready to start having a think about producing some beautiful, beautiful fertilizer. Because I can take my existing farms and just say, Hey, how would you guys like to be almost twice as efficient at producing food? But to do that, yeah, because we can't afford the fertilizer right now, okay. It's time to start thinking about fertilizer. Okay, here we go. The dye workshop is now done. So dyes should now be entering the market. We are now locally producing dyes. It's going to take a bit of time to recruit the right people to actually, you know, make all this happen. But it's all going to be fine in the long run. Any moment now, there we go, dyes. Now, there's no actual demand for dyes right now, so it's not going to turn an immediate profit. But if we turn our focus over here, you need dye. Dye is currently cheap. Dye is being produced. Okay, over to uh, the one dye plantation. Dye suddenly got expensive, uh, but that's fine. It's because we're barely producing any. Here we go. Dye is now getting it cheaper. It's into the bronze. Uh, so over here at the textile mill, uh, we are now producing a, a large number of clothes. Uh, but the price is, yes, dropping a little bit. And that's good. That is good for the economy. My people need clothes, damn it. So yeah, clothes right now are still a little bit expensive. We could do with making them cheaper. In fact, actually, food is surprisingly expensive. Unfortunately, yes, just because something's in a different territory, you can only build uh, one thing at once. Because uh, as you are all aware, building is of course done by a single central pool of builders who travel from the center of your empire out to go and build uh, and then return to the center of the empire to await further commands. Because, yes, builders don't make a huge amount of sense in this game. But you know what? Let's get another maze farm into the queue. Alright, this is all going to be absolutely flipping beautiful. Tooling workshop, that's going to take a little bit longer. Because that is a big... As I say, factory might be overselling it a bit. This might just instead be... um. A small workshop, but it's gonna do as a starting point. Oh, slight issues. Um, apparently tension is getting a little bit problematic over in um our territory. They're not happy with the fact that we just keep eating more and more lands. Oh, also, this was... Wait, was this where I was supposed to be? Uh-oh. 
I'm going to be honest, this wasn't where I thought I was supposed to be doing settling. Like, I thought we were in Pantagonia, but no, I may have slightly settled the wrong state. Okay, according to the game, they're getting a bit uneasy, but they're not going to be rising up anytime soon. Okay, for the time being, they can just crack on doing their own thing. Not a huge problem, I'm sure. Okay, the price of wood and fabric is, you know what, wood could be cheaper. We do potentially need more wood. And apparently this place is just making tons of money right now. Cash reserves are pretty much filled up. So as a result of that, they're going to start paying out dividends to the owners. That's more money for the owners. In fact, actually, you know what? The easier option could be once the tool factory is online. Okay, I think tools might be the key to everything. We could produce a lot more wood as soon as we have got, yeah, tools online. Okay, the only potential downside we've got is dye is being overproduced. We don't need that much dye. So you guys are... Okay, you're making a profit just. So we don't need to do any adjustments or anything. Everything's going just fine. Though it looks like, uh, yes, we could very easily cover a second textile mill. Assuming we had enough, uh, yeah, fabric to do it. And assuming we even needed it, like too many clothes uh, can make the price crash, but then again, that might be, okay, this is good, all right? Having too much stuff you want to build uh, that could productively be built, that's a sign of a good functioning economy. Okay, here we go. Tool factory is now underway. So the starting tool is just, yeah, crude tools uh, where we are just making, yeah, tools uh, out of wood. We should now be producing uh, a lot of tools. So keep an eye on the state of... Uh, the market. Those are, yeah, production McJibbles. So we're now producing tools. What happens if I start saying sawmills are a thing we're going to be doing? So now the cost of tools is fed into the production over here in logging camps. And soon, once iron comes on board, oh yeah, then we're going to be golden. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of building for some time. So I'd say taxes can return to normal. And how about we stick a little extra syntax on top? So, okay, can't afford that right this second. But yeah, we're just a tiny, tiny bit more in the way of authority. We could actually have a syntax, which would not be a bad thing at all. So, okay, hang about. Do we have any, like, um, you know, decrees we could turn off? Oh yeah, we're occasionally building here, but it's not that often at all. I'd rather make a tiny, tiny bit of money. Here we go, a tax on luxury clothing. Now, most people are not going to be buying that. The only people buying luxury clothing, they're going to be the ones uh, who can afford it. So, uh, there we go. I'm now building, and even then, we're barely making a loss, and taxes are, oh yeah, Oh, flipping yeah. Taxes are fine. This is not a problem. I'm a genius at economies. Okay, this is where things start getting sexy. The iron mine is now complete, meaning iron is going to start showing up. Now, immediately everyone's going to be like, hang on, what's iron? We don't need this. Nobody needs to eat iron. Why are we bothering to produce this iron? Well, don't worry. I've got a plan for that. I think tools are going to be the key to everything. So as a result of that, we are going to, yes, slip over to tool production right here. Right now, tools are apparently cheap, okay? Because, okay, there's a lack of iron. We're just going to have some slight brief hiccups in the economy while the new process comes through. We're not producing much iron right now because, yeah, we appear to have hired um, 100 shopkeepers, but no one to actually dig out the iron, which is an essential part of the iron production. Actually, you know what? They are actually producing iron. I think the shopkeepers have got bored of having no iron to sell and have gone down into the mine to do some digging by themselves. So, okay, fascinating. Okay, price of iron is now starting to go down, which is great. We might need more iron, by the way, just to uh, tide us over for the moment. In fact, I could actually do... Uh, no, I'm pretty much full upon bureaucracy. We might need to build some more government buildings for more bureaucracy at some point. Okay, Tooling Workshop now has access to... Uh, iron at a decent price, selling tools on the cheap. And they are making a profit at the moment. Now, I've realized the first thing I should do is 
get the construction center over to iron frame buildings. Because that would be a lot faster building right there. It's going to cost them tools. It's going to cost them iron and oh bloody hell. It's going to cost a lot of money apparently. Um, the price of tools is going to skyrocket. The price of iron is going to go bananas. Okay. I've got a plan. I am going to accept a tiny bit of tax wastage to just flood the market with iron. Okay, go over here, go over to trade routes. Yeah, give me a new import of iron. Someone's got to be selling iron at a decent price, right? Oh, we're going to make a huge loss importing this. There's not much. Okay, there's not that much iron floating around. I'm going to buy a bit of iron from the French market. We're making a loss on that just because... Yeah, right now iron is... Okay, it's, it's all going to be fine. Okay, we just need to get more iron in production. Because now... Oh, bloody hell. This is where wheels in wheels starts getting complicated. So, you at the moment can't construct as efficiently as you'd like. Because you don't have enough iron. But that is slowing down the production of the iron mines that are... Okay, it's all going to be fine. Where are the labourers? Why are we not... Where are the labourers? We need more people to be digging up more bloody iron. Okay, meanwhile, the price of tools is holding steady, which is good, which probably means, actually, if the price of tools is steady, what have I done to wood this exact moment in time? Okay, wood's holding together pretty nicely. Curiously, yes, services are now the most expensive. The one thing you can't import, you just produce that in big cities. So uh, as time goes by, yes, I think, hang on. Once urbanization reaches 200, then we'll reach the next level of urban center and services will just exist for free. It's going to be fine. But yes, right now we are, oh dear. Okay, the problem is, oh dear. So remember that agrarianism that I set up where basically I said... Uh, it's okay, we don't need to subsidise not-agrarian industries. It would be really nice right now to subsidise the not-agrarian industries. Because... Okay, this is this is maybe a bit of a problem. We need more iron. Okay, we desperately need iron. I mean, okay, you know what, as an interim. As an interim, what we could do is just say... Well, actually, hang on, tools are under control, aren't they? You can go over to using tools. Uh, that's not a problem, right? Yeah, you can do that. That's going to be more jobs. Uh, so, okay, that's that's good. Uh, that's brilliant right there. The dye production, that's going well also. Okay, due to the slight lack of iron and this place losing all its cash, I'm going to move you guys back over to basic wooden tools uh, until we have got more iron iron inside uh, yes the economy also speaking of the economy the cost of construction has just exploded because i'm okay i may have got a bit ahead of myself here because now there's not enough tools to there's not enough tools to dig up the iron and there's not enough iron to make the okay i've ruined everything okay the new and unimproved tooling workshop is slowly producing more tools this will cause the tool prices to fall in the long run. There we go. More tools. That's good. We've also had an election. Um, does that matter? I think these guys were already in power. I'm not sure that matters. Okay, the price of tools is now falling. That's, that's good. Meaning as a result of that, yes, the amount of iron coming in. This place is already fully employed, but we are, yes, also having more of them. Okay, the economy is into debt. Construction is, oh dear. The problem is, uh, yes, the fact we're now making buildings out of uh, iron and we don't have enough of it. So, okay, basically, my economy is being bankrupted by the fact I'm having to buy incredibly expensive uh, iron on the open market. And I'm actually importing more, but it's not enough. Okay, who can do without iron for a bit? Because we need to get iron under control. You see, the only thing I can actually move off iron now is construction. But construction, if I move it off iron, is going to slow down, which will reduce the speed at which I get more iron mines. So it's the one I do want to keep on. But okay, at this point, I'd say the single most important thing is just 
start completely flooding the market with iron. Okay, iron just became one of the most important things going. Though, okay, you know what? This is this is almost done. We can have some maize before we get into iron mine number three. Okay, iron mine number two is now happening. That is hiring. It's all going to be A-OK. -okay. Everything's going to be fine. The price of iron is now into silver out of gold. What could we do to increase the rate of iron production? Okay, there is a pump, but we don't have it because we were too focused on producing rubber, which we don't actually need for anything, but... Oh, is literally my only rubber plantation the bit that Brazil wants? Oh, bloody hell. Okay, don't, don't build that. It's just not worth it. Here we go. Atmospheric engine pump. Get working on that. It's going to take no time whatsoever because apparently everyone else already knows about it. So, yeah, we're going to figure it out in no time. Though that needs... Oh, that needs coal. We don't have coal. Oh, bloody hell. Right, start producing coal. We will start stockpiling it, even though that's going to lead to, yes, issues with... It's all going to be fine. All right, this is all going to work out. Okay, here we go. Atmospheric engine pump has popped into existence. And uh, yes, that would let us produce a lot more iron. Which would be good, aside from the fact that coal is going to go bananas. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just, let's just chill out for a second here. Let's just chill out for a second here and uh, not panic. We can have a coal mine in 21 weeks, okay? That is uh, not bad at all. And for the time being, we're already making, you know what, just, just get more iron in. I feel like we need iron for everything. We need iron to feed into tools. We need iron to feed into production. Okay, I was wondering whether we could just import coal as a temporary stopgap, but that's not looking spectacular either. Okay, check the market conditions of... Oh, that is still ridiculous. It's just the construction sector. We need so much for the construction sector. Okay, my economy can't take this for long. Iron is bankrupting us. Bloody hell. Okay, we need to go back to wooden buildings. I am so sorry about this, but as a temporary stopgap, that's what we need to do. We got a bit overexcited about this new iron thing. Okay, so everybody back to wooden buildings. That stabilizes the economy a lot, but there is still plenty of iron floating around. That means we can still have iron tools, because if I turn off all iron-related production, then what's going to happen is, uh, yeah, at that point, the whole system is going to collapse, because the iron price is going to collapse, and the iron mines are going to go bankrupt. And we're already using, yeah, tools in the furniture place. Now, textile mills. Guys, what are you guys doing? You're using dyes, nothing else. Okay, so nothing else is using iron, aside from... You guys are also needing... No, you're not needing iron. You're needing the tools. So, okay. There's a lot of demand right now for tools. How are you guys doing? Because, uh, yeah, the price of tools is... The price of tools is... There we go. I thought that was weirdly low. Right. That's now going up a bit. This is going to be A-OK. -okay, and people are now just piling in. Because this place is now making more money than it was. The economy is going to stabilize. We are going to get coal coming in. The coal is going to power more efficient iron mines. Then we go back over to, yes, proper flipping building with iron. All right, we just got this in the wrong order. Okay, things are apparently getting a bit tense in this bit of the world. So I'd like you guys to stop if you'd be so kind. Oh, though apparently if we did that, that would lead to, um, all progress being lost. We're effectively... Oh. Right. Not sure how we actually stop colonizing uh, Pantagonia. Oh, hang on. I didn't click on the wrong thing. It's just these aren't, yes, officially the same colonization area. Even if... Right. We might want to at some point, yes, check how the army's doing. Because I feel like sooner or later, things are going to start going badly wrong, potentially. Okay. Back over here, we should have... Uh, there we go. We've now got coal mines. All right, coal mines looking... 
I swear there used to be a bigger country next to us. What happened to that bigger country? Kind of exploded. All right, lads. Everybody into the coal mine. We're now going to start producing some lovely, lovely coal. All right. And I know we're not using it for anything yet, but that's fine. It's going to be used for something. Except, okay. People don't want to take the job because, yes, the price of coal is uh, too low. But then again, the price of tools is apparently extremely low right now. Okay. Is that because... Oh, the price of iron is through the... Okay, hang on. The economy's in a very different shape from what I thought it was. Okay, I'm going to start pushing buttons right now. It's going to be great. I need coal for this atmospheric pump. All right, that's going to produce a ton of iron. But that's fine because from now on, we're using it to build. That's also going to call for a giant pile of tools. So, okay, construction just went bananas. I'm also building, yes, the next flipping. Okay, iron immediately ran out. Iron just ran out immediately. But that's that's okay because the amount of iron we're producing is okay. We're losing money there because of the lack of coal. But the price of coal is going down. So it's all going to be fine. And now we're using the whole pump thing. As soon as we hire some more laborers. Okay, the price of iron is coming down. And the amount of iron is going through the roof. And we're not losing as much money. Okay, the price of iron is definitely... Oh, Flip, is it working? I think this might actually be working. Is this working? I think I've made it work. Everything is about the right price. Like, you just want to avoid uh, extremities in price. Like, if everything's uh, roughly the price it should be, that's a okay. Sugar is apparently worth... Oh. Okay, hang about. Um, how long has sugar been massively... We should be selling that sugar. Oh, blimey heck, okay. So apparently, um, yes, we could send a lot of sugar to a lot of different locations. The French would like to buy the most sugar. That would cause, yes, sugar to go down slightly in the French market, but their market's much bigger than ours. So dumping that much sugar is not going to do that much, but it's going to make the people working in the sugar production facilities much more money. And it's going to make me a giant pile of money too. So even though it's going to push me over bureaucracy, that's got to be the right thing to do. And yeah, I think the French is the best deal we're going to get. Right. Ship the French a giant pile of sugar. We might need to, yes, make some cuts elsewhere in the trade route situation. We're importing... Are we still importing? We are not importing. Oh, we're importing the wood! Bloody hell, that's been on for ages! I mean, we are still making a tiny amount of money from it, but the bureaucracy cost makes it not worth it. So put that together, then next week, the economy should be looking a little bit nicer, right? Basically the same, but I still think we're going in the right direction. Also, I've got more cotton coming in, and as soon as we stop building, the situation is looking much better. Now we're in debt, however, there is interest to be paid, so we should probably pay that down a bit. Oh, especially as... Oh, blimey. Perfect. Someone invented the stock exchange. So as a result of that, trade routes are now going to be more competitive and they're going to cost less bureaucracy. So I can 100% get another trade route out. Which means, okay. Lads, I think we've got a quiet moment to start thinking about cash crops. Hilariously, we've got basically no coffee to export purely because, yes, right now it's being drunk locally. Brilliant. Oh, that is a good point, by the way. I know I was just saying we shouldn't build anything. But, um, okay. One thing we should build is market access for these guys. We should definitely give them, like, a port. So, as a result of that, they'll be part of our market. Because uh, that's, like, a couple of thousand people who need to buy our goods. So, okay. You guys get working on that. And as we've not been building anything for a little bit of time, some of that money should come out of the investment fund. I think it already disappeared, though. I mean, the biggest expenditure is still... Uh-oh. Why am I... Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it's just Venezuela, and they just want to be friends. Yes. Done. Flipping done. Me and Venezuela standing together against the fearsome threat of Brazil. That there, that's good. Yeah, the problem is, even though the price of iron is pretty stable at the moment, yeah, it's just expensive. 
when you're building a new building, it costs a lot of bloody iron. If I want to make construction really cheap, I'd need to be flooding the market with so much iron. Oh, still, we're making a big impact now. Peasants is down to under 45%. We have got so many laborers. And laborers make so much more money than peasants do. The amount of money sloshing around the economy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. GDP going in the right direction. We're up to 32 rank in the world. I can't remember what we were when we started, but I think we've done okay. Okay, colony is growing, and there is now a port... And these guys now have access to... Okay, why are we violently suppressing some people? Stop violently suppressing people. Oh, never mind. We've got, um... Oh, dear. We've got a slight, slight, slight issue. Um, apparently there's now an uprising against us. Okay, does anyone know how armies work in this game?